Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week, we've started a study on pride and humility. And yes, it's actually a a very difficult subject to deal with in our own lives, but we must. It is absolutely necessary. This is a major part of your spiritual development and growth. And that's because, as I've said before, the two primary characteristics of the flesh nature or the sinful nature are pride and selfishness. Pride is exalting self and selfishness is putting self first or making self your priority. And so you can see they are related very close and similar, but they're different. And so now we are studying pride and the opposite of pride is humility to learn how to recognize pride because we must, we must deal with it. We must crucify pride in ourselves. And so we're learning, first of all, what pride is and what humility is. And again, real quickly, the Root meaning of humility is low, and it means to lower, to lay low, to make lowly in mind, to reduce arrogance and self-dependence, to crucify the flesh. So to reduce self-dependence and humility is acknowledging that we can do nothing in of and of ourselves. All that we have and are is from God. Humility is entire dependence upon God. Now, as much as I believe every Christian would agree with those statements, you would say, yes, amen, that's right. The fact of the matter is, In our daily lives, in our actions, in our attitudes, and even in our words, many times we contradict that. We contradict those statements. And then pride, the root word is high. And it means to exalt and to raise up. It means high-minded. It means an overestimation of yourself. And I gave you a very interesting definition. It means to envelop with smoke. In other words, what does smoke do? If you are in a cloud of smoke, what does it mean? You cannot see. And so something that is very deadly about pride is that it deceives you. It causes you not to see the truth. It deceives you. It blinds you. That's why pride is probably the most deadly of all sins. Because it blinds you and deceives you. And those who have it generally always do not know that they have it. And that's why I started out by saying, You, yes, you have a lot of ugly, stinking pride, even though you think you're pretty humble and most all Christians, they'll think they're humble. You go to church, you worship God, you pray, you think you're humble. Let me tell you something. You've got a lot of stinking, ugly pride in you. Yes, you do. But you don't see it and you don't know it. And that's the dangerous part. That's the deadly part about it. You don't know you've got it and you're walking around with it and it can kill you. You got to get rid of it. How do you get rid of it? You got to find out how, what it looks like. What are the signs? What are the characteristics? How do you see pride for what it is? That's why we are studying this lesson. And so then yesterday we went into a comparison of what is humility and what is false humility. We read two scriptures, Colossians two eighteen 
and Colossians 2, 23. Verse 18 and verse 23 both mention false humility. And in verse 23, it says, such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom. So you see, false humility has an appearance of wisdom. That's why it's deadly. You think you're humble, but you're in pride. You actually think you're speaking humbly. You think you're acting humbly. And in the reality, the truth is you are actually speaking in pride and you don't even know it because of false humility. And so such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Now to say that applying it to what we're talking about, false humility has an appearance of wisdom. It even can show some what appears to be harsh treatment of yourself, but it actually ha lacks any value. There's no value in it. Why? Because it's not truth. So I gave you yesterday an example of false humility. Humility is not talking bad about yourself. It is not putting yourself down. It is not degrading yourself. And there's a lot of Christians who will talk bad about themselves and think that they're being humble because talking bad about themselves, but talking bad about yourself is not being humble. It's basically just being stupid. It is not being humble. Talking bad about yourself, putting yourself down is not being humble. Stop it right now. Just don't ever do it again. And when you hear somebody else talking bad about themselves, you tell them to stop it. Don't do that. That is false humility and it has no value. No value in that state, in, that, in those self-degrading insults. No value. It is not humility. It is false humility. And it has an appearance of wisdom. It has appearance of righteousness. It has an appearance of, of humility, but it's not real. It's not real. Stop it. And don't, you know, don't, of course, don't insult anybody else around when you're doing it. You speak nicely to them and say, but don't talk like that. Don't put yourself down. Why? Let me explain this. It all depends on the heart and the motive of the heart in what is being said and the revelation that the person has when they say it. And that's why you really cannot accurately judge other people, whether they're in pride or humility, because the words could be the same. And yet, if you don't know their heart and if you don't know the revelation by which they are speaking, you could be misjudging them, whether they're in pride or humility. For example, I gave this example yesterday. Simple words. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I'll tell you right now, probably 98% of Christians and Unbelievers alike would probably say, if they heard me say, I'm beautiful, or anybody else say it, not just me, anybody, if they heard me or anybody say, I'm beautiful, most people would say, oh, you're just full of pride. They would label that pride. But is it pride? It all depends on the heart and the motive of the heart and the revelation that the person has when they say it. And this comes back to dependence upon God or independence from God. If I say I'm beautiful, independent of God, and I'm like one of those people looking in the mirror 
sticking my nose up in the air and saying, oh, I am just so hot. I am the hottest thing on the street. And I am giving no acknowledgement to God. That is pride. However, the very same words, I'm beautiful, could be based on the word of God. For example, let me read to you some scriptures. In Psalm 139, verses 14 and 15, it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, there is the psalmist saying, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He is acknowledging God, giving praise to God, but acknowledge how wonderful he is made. He's a creation of God, wonderfully made. Then it look, consider Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's own handiwork. Amplified Bible says his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us. So you see, we are God's handiwork, his workmanship. We, and then you go to, you think about being beautiful. The Song of Solomon is an entire book of the Bible that is to picture for us how God sees us, how God sees us. So consider Song of Solomon 115. This is God looking at you. Chapter one, verse 15. How beautiful you are, my darling. Oh, how beautiful. You see, that's in the Bible because God wants you to know he sees you as beautiful. Isaiah 62 verse three says you will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. And Zechariah chapter nine Verses 16 and 17, that you sparkle like jewels in a crown. How attractive and beautiful you are. Praise God. Zephaniah 317. He will take great delight in you. He will rejoice over you with singing. So you see, if you are saying, I'm beautiful by acknowledging God, And his word and what he says about you, that is humility. You may think it's pride, but that's where Christians have been wrong. They think a lot of Christians have thought that just calling ourselves ugly is humble and calling ourselves beautiful is proud. Wrong. Wrong. It all depends on the heart motive and who are you acknowledging? Are you just acknowledging yourself? If you only acknowledge and praise yourself, that is pride. But if you are saying I'm beautiful because you are acknowledging God, you are acknowledging what God has said about you and how God looks at you then the same words are actually humble. And to deny that you're beautiful is pride. Do you see how so many Christians have been thinking they're humble when they're proud? Because they will say things like, I'm just ugly. I'm no good. I'm stupid. And they think by degrading themselves and insulting themselves, they are being humble. No, that number one, that's stupid. And that is ignoring what God has said about you. And then if they are presented with these scriptures that I read that say, God says, you're wonderfully made, you're beautiful. And if I were to say to a Christian, oh, you are beautiful and wonderfully made. Now, what is their response going to be? If they say, no, I am not. 
If I say base to them on God's word, you are beautiful, you're wonderfully made. And they say, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Denying God's word is pride. Now they think they're humble, but they're being proud. They think they're being humble, but the truth is they're being proud because they're denying the Bible. They're denying the truth. They are not acknowledging what God has said about them is true. Let me give you another example. A lot of Christians through just trying to sound humble. They say, I'm so unworthy. I'm so unworthy. I'm no good. I'm just a worm. I'm just a worm. I'm unworthy. Well, do you know that basically that is pride if you're born again? Because when you're born again, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness. And now if you deny the power of the blood, which has cleansed you, made you righteous, the power of God that has raised you up and seated you together with him in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, 6, and you deny that and you say, no, I am not raised up. No, I'm a worm. I crawl on my belly in the dust. No, you know what the devil is supposed to crawl on his belly? Not a Christian. That was the place God told the devil to go to in Genesis chapter three to the serpent. You will crawl on your belly in the dust. A Christian does not crawl on his belly in the dust and does not grovel. A Christian acknowledges their position born again. If you're born again, you're a child of the most high God. You're a son of God. You've been raised up and seated together with him in heavenly places. Ephesians 2, 6. You have been given authority to rule and reign. I mean, we already did a series on who we are in Christ. We did a long series about your authority of the believer. And if you then, after you're born again, deny that you're righteous, deny that you're clean, deny that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ in him, then you're in pride. And so all the Christians that go around and say, no, I'm just unworthy. I'm just no good. I'm just a worm crawling in the dust. They are in pride. Because they deny the truth. They deny God's word. So humility is acknowledging what God says about you in his word. You acknowledge it is true. He said, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. He says, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. He says, I'm blameless in his sight. I'm blameless in his sight. He says I'm anointed in him. Then I'm anointed in him. I acknowledge his word is the truth about me. At any point that you deny God's word about you, that is pride. Pride is denying what God says. Pride is denying what God says. Now, again, going back to those statements, like, for example, I'm beautiful. It, the root is the heart motive. What is the heart motive behind saying it? And is there acknowledging God? So this is the next question. Are you acknowledging God or are you not acknowledging God? Are you acknowledging God in it? If so, recognizing it's because of him, then you are in humility. God says, I'm beautiful in him. I'm righteous. He has made me worthy. 
then if you are giving him the glory and the credit for it in your heart, then that is humility. But if you are not acknowledging him, if you are taking the credit, if there is no acknowledgement of God, then it is pride. You can say the same words. I'm beautiful. And when you're acknowledging God and it's based on God's word, it's humility. But if you are not acknowledging God, not giving God any credit, then it's pride. You just think you're hot stuff by yourself. Then you're, you're, you're deceived. That's pride. You are not anything good because in yourself, you're good. No, you're good because in him, you're good. You see that? You're not good because in yourself, you're good. You are good because in him, you're good. So as long as you keep your heart acknowledging it's because of him only, and he gets the glory and you're acknowledging and receiving what he says about you, then it is humility. But anytime you forget, and you see it, a lot of times it's not intentional, it's forgetting. We forget to acknowledge God. That's what's dangerous. Christians do it all the time. Even like I'm saying, you can sit here and listen to me. Yeah, Cherry, I agree with that. Amen. That's right. But the problem is, is that we go along day by day and times we forget to acknowledge God. And we pat ourselves on the back a little bit and we say, you really did a good job. And if you forget to acknowledge God, that's when you're in pride. So it is acknowledging God in everything. Anytime you deny God or deny what God says, it is pride. Another way to say acknowledging is also being dependent on God. You are, you know that you're only good because you are dependent on God's goodness in him. You are good. But anytime you try to think independently of God, independence of God is pride. Pride is independence from God. Pride is independence from God. Let me say it again. Listen, pride is independence from God. Say it with me. Pride is independence from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Humility is acknowledging God in everything good. Humility is acknowledging God in everything good. Giving God the glory for everything good. Not the bad. The bad stuff is you. The good stuff is him. That's simple. If it was bad, it was you. If it was good, it was him. Simple little lesson a child, a five-year-old in kindergarten can understand. If it was bad, it was you. You messed up. If it was good, it was God. Anytime you see anything good that in you or you have done, give God the glory. It was him. Anything in you or that you've done that was bad, blame yourself. It was you. It was you. The bad is you. The good is God. And so we have to recognize that at all times. And so it's, we have to learn to distinguish pride and humility because a, a lot of religious thinking has been deceived, calling prideful things humble and calling prideful statements humble and calling humble statements pride there was the false humility a lot of religiosity is actually false humility and so humility is being submissive to god and let me say one more thing about pr humility is not poverty let me just point that out real quick humility is not poverty for example there are people, and you've heard it again and again, they have a small home and it's not very expensive inside. It's not, you know, super beautiful or anything. And they say, come to my humble home. 
Well, number one, a home cannot be humble because humility is of the heart. A house doesn't have a heart. It's not the house that is humble. It's the people in the house. Are you proud or humble? Now, are you catching what I'm saying? Humility is of the heart. Humility is an attitude of the heart. A house is an inanimate object. It has no heart. So whether it's a shack or whether it's a mansion, it cannot be proud or humble because it's not a heart. It doesn't have a heart. It doesn't have a living thing. It's not a living thing. I mean, it's the people in the house. Now, just because it's poor, because it's run down, doesn't mean it's humble. Relating to poverty does not make it humble. We just have a humble home. No, you have a poor house. You have a cheap house, but it doesn't make it humble. You could be in the humble or let me say poor, cheap house and yet be very proud. You know, some people say, well, I don't have much, but I've got my pride. Well, that's not good. Say, I don't have much, but I've got my pride. Get rid of your pride. Your pride is what's killing you. Get rid of your pride. It's what's killing you. Well, I'm running out of time again. You need to learn humility. Humility will prosper you. Now, all day long, give God the glory for everything good. Join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.